So today in this video, I'm going to show you a surgery of uh, mucormycosis, basically a mixed infection, mucormycosis and aspergillosis. So this was a patient of uh, COVID one month back. So currently this patient is post COVID. So this could be a COVID associated mucormycosis. Uh, so we, the patient had presented with complaints of left sided uh, orbital pain, left side cheek swelling minimal and uh, sensation over the left cheek and the left lateral nasal part of the skin was 70% absent. So he had loss of sensation. Also he had severe headache. So I did the routine nasal endoscopy, but the nasal endoscopy did not show any positive findings for mucormycosis. The nasal mucosa was healthy, no eshka, no crusting, no pus whatsoever. So it's quite possible in many of the patients, the nasal symptoms and signs may not appear initially and the nasal endoscopy can be completely normal even though the sinus is showing any fungal changes. The nasal mucosa, the nasal cavity may be normal. That's quite possible. So in this patient also, the nasal mucosa was kind of pinkish, uh, reddish pink, healthy, except for the fact that in the posterior aspect, it was somewhat paler. So, but that does not signify that the patient was having mucormycosis, that's for sure. So we got the patient's MRI scan done. Now I'm gonna show you the basics of MRI. Now, I keep getting a lot of questions as to how you should identify mucor or aspergillosis. In short, how do you identify fungus on an MRI scan? So what, what I've done over here, I'm going to show you all the three scans at the same time. This is T1, this is T2, this is T1 post contrast. At the same time, same images. If I move back uh, from anterior to posterior, posterior to anterior, these three images are going to move at the same time. So this will be very easy for us to understand the basic concepts of the MRI, which is for an ENT and a skull based surgeon is of great value. Now, to begin with the most anterior aspect, what you can see as a routine, the nasal turbinates, the inferior ones as we keep on going behind the middle turbinates. You can see this is a T1 which is kind of dark and this is T2 kind of bright as compared to the T1 over here. And in the post contrast, you can see the normal illumination because the contrast is normally taken up. So hence, in cases of standard, uh, you know, the, the, the typical mucormycosis patients where the nasal cavity shows a lot of changes, there is obliterative necrosis, loss of blood supply, everything becomes pale, bluish black, eschar formation, and the tissues lose the blood supply. And the post contrast scan will not show any uptake of the scan of the contrast in the scan. But as you can see over here in this patient, everything is bright, illuminant, all the turbinates are showing the contrast uptake. So, as I said, the nasal endoscopy in this patient was completely normal. So moving on to the first thing, now this is T1. Now, how do you say that this is T1? We all know that any fluid in the body, say for example, the vitreous aqueous humor in the orbit, the CSF in the brain, the nasal secretions, the, the secretions in the sinuses, they all are fluid watery and they appear to be as hypo intense or dark in case of T1. And the same thing as you can see over here, CSF is bright white. Um, this is the orbital fluid over here. This is bright white and the secretions or anything watery fluid uh, will be bright white. The nasal turbinates may appear as slightly bright because of the water content, the uh, inflammation going on inside. So this is all about the T2, basic T2. Now, one more point. Now, fat on T1 will be bright. Fat on T2 will also be bright. So let me show you, uh, give you a proper example of this. As you can see, this is uh, this is the orbit, right, and this is the left. This is also right, this is left. You can see the orbit muscles over here, the superior medial inferior and the lateral rectus you can see a small superior oblique over there you can see a lot of other muscles and the vessels as well over here and uh, this is basically the optic nerve in the center that's the optic nerve here and whatever you can see the bright white structure over here is nothing but the orbital fat and this is nothing but the bone and this is a bone marrow inside and this is orbital fat so t1 the the fat is bright uh, T2, the fat is bright. And what does bone have inside? The bone has got the bone marrow, which is also a fat, which also sh appears to be as bright in cases of T1 and T2. As you can see, this is T1 bright. This is bone marrow. This is also uh, T1. This is T2. This is also bright. 
and I can see in this post contrast you cannot see that so this is basically uh, post contrast yeah the post contrast we cannot see this this is completely black over here so this has to be this is a bone we can see over here this is the the bone inside that's the frontal bone as we keep on going behind this should be the yeah this should be the frontal bone the temporal bone over here so this is a basic and uh, if you go behind for the pterygoid wedge I'm so sure you can see this is a pterygoid bone that's the pterygoid wedge you can see that this is the bone marrow inside and which is going to appear as fat and it, it is going to appear as hyper intense same thing on t2 it is going to appear as slightly hyper intense and this is a greater wing of spinoid basically that's the greater wing of spinoid bone and that's the temporal lobe that's the the ventricle over there that's the medial pterygoid that's the lateral pterygoid plate over there and you can see the two no, canals as well so these are the muscles of the infratemporal fossa and uh, that is basically how you can see the the bone the pterygoid wedge with the bone marrow inside and the same thing which you can see on the post contrast you can see this is a temporal lobe here that's the same thing and that's the bone over there which is black on the mri and this is all the basics which we need to know on in cases of the uh, the MRI and you can see this is the clivus bone over here with the clivus uh, bone marrow and the blood supply the, the venous sinuses and the cavernous blood supply uh, in the in the clivus bone over here and this is also the clivus bone this is also the clivus bone so this is basic bone anatomy of the MRI now coming back to the fungus which is the most important thing uh, before that there's one more point inflammation now in cases of sinuses surgery the inflammation word is very important now if in case of T1 if there is an inflammation or edema it is going to appear as dark on t1 and the same thing will be appearing as bright on t2 so inflammation on t1 is dark inflammation on t2 is kind of bright so that remember this very important point so this i'm going to use in case of identification of the fungus inside the sinus so as I said, the post-contrast nasal turbinate, nasal cavity looks to be very healthy, taking up all the contrast. It means the blood supply is kind of normal in the nasal cavity. However, now I'm going to show you the real pathology inside the sinus over here. Uh, you remember me saying I said the patient had a little bit of swelling uh, in the eye, cheek swelling as well, loss of sensation, which directs us to look at for the left maxilla. So as you can see, this is the left maxilla on the right side. This is the right maxilla. This is the left maxilla. And you can start seeing some opacification at the very anterior aspect of the uh, maxilla on the left side, which is hypo on T1. But the same thing you can see over here appears to be as hyper on T2. So what if we can diagnose is that this could be some secretion or it could be some, you know, some secretions, which is not very thick as such it could be pus secretions as well but pus normally on t2 is less bright and you can see this is almost the same intensity so this could be a fluid retention because of the secondary infection or the secondary uh, to the blockage so as we keep on going behind and as we keep on going behind and you can see the post contrast over here the inflammation is tremendous here you can see the post contrast everywhere there's inflammation inflammation so more the inflammation more the blood supply and more is the uptake of the contrast so that's the concept in the mri you can see this is the t1 hypo t2 hyper and post contrast uptake as well so it could be inflammation and if we keep on going behind we can see the actual maxilla and we can see something the point of interest over here you can see a lot of collection at the roof of the maxilla along with the floor of the orbit so if you can compare the floor of the orbit of both the sides uh, you can see this is the floor of the orbit and this is all fat that's the peri or beta the fat and uh, you can see this is the uh, the medial rectus that's the inferior rectus and as you keep on going behind this is the inferior rectus which is very closely related to this uh, the, the hypo collection over here so this is definitely some collection this is definitely something over here and this is definitely something over here as well that's the t2 uh, and you can appreciate the elevation on the floor of the orbit on the left side the floor of the orbit on the right side is over here and the floor of the orbit on the left side is kind of high up so there's something which is pushing the globe up 
and still T1 was showing hypo with few hyper intense areas on T1. Now, what is hyper intense on T1? Now, this is a more important point. Now, all the secretions fluid on T1 is hypo intense and the same T1, if something is hyper, it could be proteins along with fungus which you see in cases of fungal infection, the proteins. But also remember that the most important point of this entire video in case of radiology is that the fungus will be hypo on both T1, both T2, as well as the post contrast T1. So all these three scans I'm showing you, the fungus will be hypo in all these three images. It's never gonna illuminate. The fungus will never show illumination. The fungus will never ever take any contrast. The fungus doesn't do that. Fungus will not have any uptake of the contrast. In all these sections, fungus has to be dark hypo. So we, we saw that this is hypo, this is hypo, and this few areas is showing as, you know, this hyper intense areas, uh, few in hyper intense areas here as well. So most of this, I can suggest that this could be the fungus, this could be the fungus with some intermittent areas of inflammation over there. So as you can see, this is the maxillary sinus over here, and that's the, the mucosal hypertrophy edema. And as I said, the edema inflammation looks dark on T1, but the same thing da looks bright on T2. So this could be a mucosal edema or the inflammation or somewhat increased blood supply because of which the T2 appears as bright. And the same thing which we look on post contrast, there is somewhat, somewhat uptake of the contrast you can see over here. So this could represent the inflammation or the secretions mostly. Mostly it looks like inflammation. So this is secondary to the infection happening inside. So that is nothing that significant. You can see the olfactory bulb over here at the base of brain. Now, coming on to the second point of the fungus identification is that uh, we need to keep on going behind. So if you go behind, you can see this is a maxillary sinus and that's the very end of the maxillary sinus. And you can see something hypo and something bright over here. So this could be also the collection or it could be the mucosal hypertrophy on the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus. It's quite possible. So I'll be looking at the sagittal section as well. And you can see the hypo collection over here and that is the hyper intensity at the posterior most aspect of the posterior wall of the maxilla. And if you keep on going behind, that's the infratemporal fossa over here. That's the pterygopyatan fossa over here. That you can see, that's the, the spinoid rostrum. That's the, the pterygoid wedge, the temporal lobe. This area somehow looks to be normal. So there is no unwanted. You, you can see this is completely normal on both sides. There is no uh, atypical or atypical appearance of the contrast over here. No inflammation, everything seems to be normal. So our disease in the patient is limited. Uh, you can see the bone marrow, the fatty content of the, the, the pterygoid wedge, the greater wing of spinoid is completely normal over here. There's no abnormal signal. So as far as I can see, the, the pathology lies here in the floor of the orbit. Now also you can see the level of the orbit has gone up and the inferior rectus muscle is in direct contact with the collection which you can see at the floor of the orbit. Now the second most important thing is to identify the lamina papyracea over here and the floor of the orbit bone over here. So if I can just zoom this, you can see just follow my cursor over here, you can see the small line of blackish shadow that is the lamina papyracea over there. That's the nasal tissue. That's the lamina papyracea. And thus lamina papyracea is basically intact throughout. If I keep on going behind and superiorly, anterior, posteriorly, you can see this blackish shadow is intact throughout. That means the lamina papyracea is not eroded as such in this case. Uh, so similarly, we need to follow uh, the, the, the floor of the orbit. So if I can see on T1, on T2 or the post contrast, we can definitely see that the floor of the orbit. So this was the collection over here. That's the, the floor of the orbit. That's the periorbita. That's the inferior rectus muscle. That's the bone over there, which disappears over here somewhere. And as we keep on going behind this black line, the bone disappears over here. 
and there's no black line all the way up here and then we can see a black line over here somewhere very faint so the the, the bony shadow is gone so it means that the infective foci of collection over here uh, which could be a fungal material uh, has eroded the bone the bone is nowhere there and it has definitely uh, entered in the the orbit definitely but you can see this is the intraconal see this is a muscle medial rectus inferior rectus superior rectus this is superior oblique and lateral rectus somewhere over here so anything inside the circular part of these muscles is intraconal and anything outside this part is the extraconal so i think that the inflammation which you can see over here is the extraconal involvement so there are two things in the orbit over here one is the floor of the orbit has undergone erosion over this complete part so we may have to go for a reconstruction after removal of the the fungal material over here which we can take an sos call during the surgery we can use a titanium mesh or a med pore or we can use a foley scatterer for time being and we can see this collection definitely in the maxillary sinus and this collection above the the floor of the orbit and just at the level of the floor of the orbit this we have to clear in the surgery so if we look at this uh, t2 scan the entire thing looks as hypo but now now let me come and show you the the post contrast study for you guys so if you can see the post contrast study you can see this is the layer this is this area of the the hyper intense area which you could see in the t1 part uh, but not in the t2 you can see some inflammation over here the contrast is being taken up at this level the entire floor of the uh, sorry not the floor the entire lower aspect of the collection in the maxillary sinus is showing a lot of enhancement uh, post contrast you can see the inferior rectus muscle showing the normal contrast uptake so if it had undergone inflammation or edema or something like that it would have shown a tremendous amount of uptake of the contrast but the amount of the uptake of the contrast here looks to be completely normal so the inferior rectus muscle though even though it is in contact with the fungal material over here it has not undergone any serious or severe edema or inflammation so that's a good thing hence the patient's orbital movements were completely intact there was no diplopia as such for the patient while presenting the to the opd so this concern is that the area of the inflammation over here so as you can compare the uh, the t1 the t2 and the post contrast uh, t1 images this area of collection this area of collection and this area so this is hypo hypo and t1 and t2 somewhat hyper intense intermittent hypo and hyper uh, here also intermittent hypo and hyper and this is throughout this is hypo the uptake is not here seen here but the uptake up here is seen clearly so this could be an inflamed mucosa surrounding the area of the infection severely infected you can see the amount of the uptake of the contrast is tremendously high on this region as compared to the uptake taken around in the normal tissues you can see the uptake taken here is tremendous so as we go from the anterior and the posterior aspect this entire tissue has uh, undergone a tremendous uptake so this could be the severely inflamed tissue uh, because of which there is uh, the uptake is high in this region but as you can see this area over here which corresponds to this area over here which this is the inferior rectus muscle clearly seen and this is a whole chunk of the the lesion which is definitely fungus because this is hypo over here this is hypo over here so see you can see this is the the this is the post contrast enhanced mass which you could see over here this is the inflamed mucosa in the maxillary sinus and this above here you can see the hypo this above here is the hypo this is immediately below the inferior rectus immediately below the inferior rectus that is necrosis of the floor of the orbit here the necrosis of floor of the orbit is quite evident and here that is the mass which we have to remove during the surgery which is going to be the game changing part of the surgery if we don't remove this part over here if we don't remove this part over here this part over here then the inferior rectus muscle is going to undergo necrosis and in future this patient may have re-entry of the fungus in the orbit again and this time it may go in the intra orbital or the intra compartment and which is dangerous for the patient and the surgeon as well.
So we have to make sure that we have to remove this inflamed part, this inflamed collection in the maxilla by doing the modified endoscopic Denkers procedure. So we have a head on approach. And then after doing so, we have to go uh, search for the necrosed floor of the orbit bone and go beyond that superiorly and remove this necrotic fungal tissue over here. This is the main aim of my surgery today. So this was the basic. So this is how you should be identifying the fungus or the collection in case of the mucor mycosis suspect or the case or uh, suspect case or confirmed case by QH, whatever it is. And this is how you should come down to the, uh, the level of the infection or the depth of the infection. So as we also concluded that beyond the maxillary sinus, there is no infection. The infection is completely restricted to the maxillary superior wall. The roof and the floor of the orbit is across the extra conal compartment is involved. So that is going to be the main aim of our surgery. Um, there's one more case where I have explained the extreme inv invasion of the fungus in the retro maxillary pterygopalatine fossa, infratemporal fossa, the maxillary artery and across everything. Soon I'll be uploading that as well. But in this case, the orbit is the main thing and nowhere else. Also, the, the second thing is that the, the, the palate on this patient, most of the mucormycosis patient also have palatal involvement. So let me show you how the palate of this patient looks like. So you can see this is a palate over here down on the inferior aspect. You can see this is a palate on the inferior aspect over here. Uh, this is a palate over here. This is the palate. So this is the palate which is taking a normal post contrast enhancement. So this is the enhancement. This is the enhancement. That's the mucosa over there. You can see we even thorough throughout normal enhancement all over the place. Um, you can see this is the palate of the patient. That's the tongue over there. And um, this is not showing any obliterative uh, blockage to the contrast. So th this is the only high contrast uptake we can see over here. We can remove this. Now I'm going to shift on to the surgical video and in detail I'm going to show you how you do, how, how, we, how you guys can perform the surgery uh, in cases of mucormycosis.